This video has been supported by PCBWA. More on that later in the video. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue the improvement of my reflow station and I will show you what kind of uh, new ideas I uh, came up with and uh, I will show you the implementation and uh, the testing of that idea. So this reflow station uh, has been shown in some of my videos. Sometimes I directly introduced it and worked with it and I showed you how it works but sometimes I used it in other videos to, for example, uh, solder other circuits. And in this video I go back to the roots of this thing and I will show you some hopefully signif significant improvement uh, for the heating part. And I actually used this uh, in uh, my previous video where I assembled a custom-made ADS-1256 board but uh, I discussed some uh, drawbacks of this uh, new improvement and in this video I'm trying to tackle that uh, issue and uh, show you some improvement. So what we have here from the left side that is my uh, custom made uh, PCB and all the circuitry here. So the top part here where, which is covered with this acrylic plate is a uh, high voltage uh, 230 volts uh, mains voltage part and that is a triac uh, switched uh, part uh, which switches this uh, heater or this heater on and off and then here we have the low voltage part which is basically a microcontroller based uh, circuitry Arduino Nano which controls a uh, LCD and uh, reads this uh, K-type thermocouple module and this rotary encoder and of course switches the triax, triac on and off and the transistor on and off when it's needed. And uh, the main improvement for this uh, thing is first of all that I replace this ceramic heater and I will use this micro heater. So this ceramic heater, uh, I showed this and uh, discussed this in my previous video, has the disadvantage that uh, it doesn't heat homogeneously because uh, as you can guess from these uh, channels on the surface uh, the heating wires are running in these channels or in the vicinity of these channels therefore these channels will be of course uh, hotter uh, than yeah, the gaps between uh, them and this will cause some uneven heating uh, which is not too good especially not good if I have a big uh, PCB because I not only noticed that there is some kind of uh, pattern between these uh, different parts of the, of the ceramic heating plate, but there is a gradient across uh, the heater. So let's say this spot can be very hot, but this is lagging behind a little bit, uh, which causes uh, yeah, issues because here I already have the molten solder, but here the solder is not yet uh, melted. So that's an issue. So then I uh, came up with the idea that I should use a different kind of heater and that is this mica heater and uh, actually not the mica which is heating because of course that's an insulating material but I think that insulating material in this heater plays a more important role than uh, the heater itself. So outside we have this uh, stainless steel jacket it's just a very thin sheet of stainless steel wrapped around the wall thing and what we have inside is, uh, first of all, there is a mica plate with these uh, dimensions, or a bit smaller, of course. And then uh, this mica plate is wrapped around with a uh, yeah, conductive wire, which is the heating wire. And then uh, this uh, mica plate wrapped with the wire is surrounded by two other uh, plates. So it is basically a sandwich. So then uh, the wires are completely... Uh, isolated from everything else electronically of course and uh, therefore the wires are protected so you cannot really uh, yeah get electrocuted if you touch this metal surface and then the wall sandwich is then wrapped with this uh, stainless steel uh, jacket but here comes the trouble stainless steel really prone to yeah quite a significant thermal expansion and now here we have a confined uh, let's say volume so whenever this thing is heated up to 200, 300 or almost 400 degrees Celsius then it expands a lot and since it's confined and uh, it's a fixed uh, thing uh, what happens to this? It, it gets swollen 
And then the problem is that when it gets swollen, then uh, the surface is not flat anymore because it becomes more like a pillow. Which means that uh, whatever I put on the surface of this thing, especially if it has a longer dimension, it will not touch the metal at its full surface. And of course that's an issue because then uh, wherever there is a gap between the surface of this metal thing and the bottom of my PCB, uh, there is a worse heat transfer there. And therefore the soldering is again, uh, yeah, jeopardized, let's say. So then I came up with the idea, which will be these uh, sheets here. And these are just aluminum sheets. Uh, they still have the protective uh, yeah, foil on it because I want to peel it in front of you. So you can also have the same, you can share the same joy with me. So these are 1.5 millimeter and two millimeter thick uh, plates, the same dimensions and the same dimensions as this thing. So what I imagine here is that I will use these uh, paper clips uh, and of course, after removing this foil, I will uh, attach uh, this first the thinner uh, plate to this mica plate. And what I hope here is that uh, first of all, it will give some rigidity to this heater and it will also help to uh, spread the heat more evenly, more homogeneously. And uh, therefore, the heating on the PCB would be a bit better than before. And I chose aluminium, of course, because, well, it was cheap and available, but of course, aluminium is a quite good thermal conductor. So it will not be too uh, difficult to have this in the system as, as some kind of uh, extra volume. And uh, then I also tried to use a relatively thin uh, piece because I did not want, want uh, to add too much let's say thermal inertia to this system and uh, therefore since this is small volume of material due to its thickness it's a little uh, only a little thermal mass so hopefully it will heat up fast enough and uh, how I will test this is I will just use my uh, typical uh, test specimens so I have these uh, PCBs uh, AS5600 uh, PCBs so these are my favorite uh, magnetic encoders uh, attached to this PCB and I will align them like this or something like this and see how they uh, are soldered and then we can see if my improvement is really an improvement or just some garbage. So now since we have this many PCBs all around uh, my working uh, area I want to introduce you the sponsor of this video PCBWay so PCBWay is a really nice service provider. We have been working together for quite a long time and they have been always providing me these very nice uh, PCBs. So if you want to get, uh, for example, these PCBs, uh, both of them, uh, they are available on their website. Link is in the description. But if you want to make your own uh, PCB, uh, visit PCBWay.com and then look around in their services because they can make PCBs for you based on your even this simple or more sophisticated designs or even better designs or they can provide you CNC machining, 3D printing and other similar services which can be very very useful for us uh, makers so please head over to pcbway.com and then use their services I highly encourage them and soon they will have some very nice things for you so stay tuned and keep visiting pcbway.com so coming back to the soldering, uh, what we have to do here is that I have to remove these and first of all, as I said, I'm going to try with the thinner 1.5 millimeter uh, sheet. I have 2 millimeter here, but I think the thinner will provide enough rigidity. So yeah, there is nothing else to do here, it's just I will try to peel off this uh, plastic uh, sheet. And then I will uh, use the clips to attach uh, this aluminium on this mica heater. And then we will try the soldering.
So the foil is off and I hope you are as much satisfied as I am. So now we can place this over this part. And I have no idea if this is some kind of standardized size or something like that. It's uh, 10 by 15 centimeters. But uh, the mica sheet and this aluminum sheet was in the same size. So uh, it's a bit surprising that uh, I could get that. I could get both of them in the same size. So this is what we have and then it seems like there is no gap right now but we have to see when this thing starts to expand whether it will uh, mess up everything or not but now this is like yeah more or less aligned and of course I will have to assemble the PCBs so I will switch to another camera and of course uh, these PCBs doesn't don't contain too much uh, parts uh, just five parts the chip two resistors, two capacitors, but at least you can see how I struggle with the assembly. And then of course I will also show you the close-up video of me uh, trying to solder everything here. So let's switch to the other camera and let's see how the things are assembled. So I have completed the four boards and uh, you could see that my uh, paste application skills are not the best so yeah uh, the paste the solder paste looks quite ugly for many boards so they will probably really will not be the best but I will choose the best uh, of this and I will record the soldering process of that I added one more clip here hopefully it will not fly off but what this does is that it keeps this thermocouple wire here and then uh, there is a blob at the end of this thermocouple wire wire where the two parts are yeah spot welded together so there is a metal blob as you can see it on the picture now and that metal blob is in physical contact with the surface so that will give the temperature feedback for my controller and uh, now basically i just set up the camera for one of the best uh, boards which uh, has the best uh, solder paste application and then uh, I start uh, the, the procedure of uh, yeah, reflowing the things. So I will move to the other camera and you will see the soldering process very soon. So here is the result, still it is a bit smoking and one of the boards which I suspected that it will be messed up, uh, it uh, became messed up. I just removed them and put them somewhere just to not uh, bake them anymore because there is no, uh, no cooling for them. But uh, I can tell you that most of the uh, experiment went well. Uh, let me just put this here. So now this surface is obviously very hot and it will stay hot for a while because there is some thermal mess. But uh, yeah, probably it's not visible in the camera, but this was a bit messed up. I will uh, upload some pictures just to show that uh, yeah, I can make bad boards as well. And uh, this board too has some defects, uh, some excessive soldering material uh, at the chip, but uh, I can... Uh, yeah, correct it by uh, using my heat gun but then this became uh, quite nice I cannot see any short circuits I will take a picture of this as well and you will see it how it looks so all in all it's nice and uh, I haven't noticed uh, too much uh, thing uh, regarding the flatness of this board so the aluminium stayed quite stiff that's really nice 
and uh, that's what I wanted. So it's even enough to use 1.5 millimeter uh, thick uh, aluminum sheet for this dimension, so for 10 by 15 centimeters. The only thing which I uh, experienced and uh, why I had to shut uh, down the experiment a bit suddenly because this clip uh, was not attached to the corner properly. So then when this thing heated up, the clip jumped off, almost hit my face because I was looking at the board uh, from, from close. So that was a bit funny moment, but uh, yeah, it was not a big deal. So I will work out some way to attach the thermocouple better to this uh, surface. And then I think that this will be my go-to board. So the only thing that we need is a micro heater and then just add the 1.5 millimeter thick uh, aluminum plate to it and it will be perfect. Uh, the heat will be distributed nicely and you can see on the curves which I put on the display uh, that actually the heating curve was really nice. So I took some pictures uh, with my phone during the experiment and you could see that the heating curve was really nice. So this uh, additional thermal mass was really nice to kind of smooth, uh, uh, smoothen the uh, temperature curve. So, of course, it, uh, because of the thermal inertia, it took more time to get to the certain temperature. So the curve, as you could see, uh, it was more uh, flat. But yeah, uh, it was a really successful experiment. And I think that this will be uh, a very nice uh, addition uh, to my yeah, DIY reflow station. So this is what I wanted to show you. I think uh, this is a very important and nice improvement and quite cheap uh, system. I will put all my details uh, about this uh, project uh, to my website. So please don't forget to visit my website. If you want to support my work and uh, help me to create these kind of things, please uh, consider becoming my Patreon because if I get yeah, more money, obviously I can buy more stuff. And uh, last but not least, please visit the website of PCBWay. Either for checking my other projects, you can find a lot of uh, PCB related projects which you can uh, buy from them. Or if you have your own uh, PCB design uh, assembled already uh, in KiCad, for example, or any kind of design software, I think they are the best option to go to. They are cheap, fast and reliable. And usually these three things don't go together, but for them, I have never been uh, disappointed with their services and products. So please visit pcbway.com and uh, check if they have any kind of suitable offer or service for you. So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.